Welcome to the Vices in Terrible 30 Minutes to Kill podcast. Well, hello there. Hi there. Hi. You are listening to the Vices and Terramo show. I think I'm just going to drop that whole 30 minutes to kill since that's not happening these days. Anyhow, this is a horror entertainment podcast featuring horror, suspense, psychological thrillers, and uh, zombie dramas. Well, anyhow, I am your host, Michael Mad Saxon Jones, with my lovely wife, Lori. Say hello, Lori. Hello. How are you today? <laughs> I'm okay, in spite of some technical difficulties, I guess. Yes. Uh, well, we may, okay. may, we may or may not talk about that later. But anyhow, I was talking about the show and the fact that you can find us on iTunes, Stitchers, Podomatic, and uh, just about anywhere. Uh, type in Vices in Terramo, V-I-C-I-S-I-N-T-E-R-I-M-O. Uh, generally, the show has four segments. We do uh, Laid to Rest, where we take care of anything that we may have missed in the previous weeks or week's shows. Uh, we do a review of a movie. What's today's movie? Maggie. Yeah. I remembered. Yay. <laughs> but could you remember last episode? Oh, dear. Yeah. Trick question. All right. So anyhow, uh, we follow up with a garbage in, garbage out, where we talk about any books movies, TV shows, anything we may have come across the, the last week or two that strikes our fancy. And then we always end with a, well, we try to always end with a crawling chaos. Do you have one this week? I do. Thanks to Darren again. Awesome. So many things to thank Darren for. Thank you, Darren in Vegas. <laughs> and uh, we'll get to that a, a little bit later on then. But uh, Do you think he minds being called Darren in Vegas? I, I don't know. Like that's his whole, like that's his name, Darren well, in Vegas. I was going to say, there is there a host name we can give him? Actually, no, I shouldn't even talk about that yet. Hopefully, you shouldn't be talking about that at all. <laughs> you know. What are you doing? Anyway, so what are we doing next? Uh, so next, let's do our uh, very ever so brief uh, laid to rest. Okay. <laughs> Well, I don't have anything laid to rest because I don't even remember what we did last time. <laughs> you want well, to? The, uh... the last show that we did, of course, was Crimson Peak. Uh, in oh. between, then, though, we also talked about Clock from uh, the absolute number one films or absolutely no one. Um, yeah, so we got a couple of things in between there, yes. um, but uh, nothing to add. All that? I don't think so. Okay. I I did uh, read a lot more reviews on Crimson Peak, and people were really upset that that it was more of a um, psychological thriller, you know, people movie with a very light supernatural element. So that's too bad. Well, you know what? It was the way it was marketed. the The previews were awesome, and that's what everybody said. Mm -hmm. This is where your your trailer kills your movie awesome trailer it was also an awesome movie but they weren't uh really simpatico with each other yeah there. not at all yeah okay yeah well you and know it was rated r oh my gosh an awesome rated r scary horror and then you go and it's like eh, this is just a drama with people yeah so yeah i still love it though you, well i was gonna I'm say just saying be warned if you haven't watched it yet, don't don't judge it on the trailer at all Kind of, I mean, the the beauty of how it was filmed and everything, you could judge that. It's absolutely a beautiful period piece with the sets and the costumes and the location and all of that. But, yeah, the story-wise and supernatural, uh, scary horror, that is not there. Okay. Well, I think that same thing is going to apply to the movie that we're going to talk about today. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> because it's, so it's a theme. It's a it, theme with it us. It seems to be a theme, yeah, because that, well, first of all, um, let's... Uh, Anything else laid to rest? N nothing else laid to rest. I want to get right okay. into talking about Maggie. Let's go. All right. <laughs> The 
Once a jolly swag man camping by a billabong Under the shade of a coolabar tree And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy boiled You'll go a waltzing Matilda with me Dad, you've protected me all my life. Now it's my turn to protect you. There is life with you, not with me. Don't come looking for me. I'm safe. I'm fine. Mr. Vogel. release someone with this type of infection. Dad! I need you to follow the rules here. The quarantine is eight weeks in. She's probably going to show more signs of aggression than hunger. When that happens, say your goodbyes and get her straight through quarantine. Promise your mother that I will protect you. Quarantine rules plot everybody, Wade. So read the synopsis, and then we'll discuss uh, some of the problems right from the outset here. Okay. Remember those technical problems you were talking about earlier? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, my computer's about ready to uh, roll over and die, but um, I'm trying to get the synopsis up still. I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, let's talk about some of the problems in the meantime, then. Uh, you notice I said this was a zombie drama that we yes. would be talking about, uh, as opposed to introducing it as a horror movie. Right. Hey, um, look at I got that was really fast. Thank you, computer. I have to encourage it so it doesn't die soon. Okay. You're doing such a good job. Please don't do anything crazy today because I need you. Okay. Well, Maggie was oh is from 2015, which was this year, um, and it's PG-13. When a zombie infestation ravages her Midwest town, young Maggie soon begins turning into one of the flesh-eating creatures. But her father refuses to give up on her and insists on caring for Maggie at home, a decision he may come to regret. That's not quite right. And you know what? This has Arnold in it. (laughs) How could anything be wrong that has Arnold, right? Nothing is wrong if Arnold's in it. Except maybe the state, but anyhow. uh, (laughs) Okay. No political commentary. Sorry. No. Oh, well, well, we appreciate him leaving California, but, you know, I'm sorry, Arnold. I love you. I've loved him since the fourth grade, Uh, since the 70s, when he was Mr. Universe before he even had his first acting gig. I had posters of him in my bedroom before he was even an actor. (laughs) Most people don't believe me, but you can ask my parents. I used to get bodybuilding magazines so that I could see him. I grew up loving bodybuilding. It's my dad's fault. Anyway, Maggie. Yes, back to Maggie. And Abigail Breslin. Awesome. Played Maggie. She's grown up to be quite a great actor, I guess. Yes. Um, we uh, first saw her, what? Uh, Little Miss Sunshine. Little Miss Sunshine, that's right, as they were heading to Redondo Beach. But that's another story for another time. Yes. Back to Maggie. Uh, this movie, I think, <laughs> is a great movie. But I yes. think it was... I don't even want to say it was marketed poorly. It just... You know what? It wasn't. Because what I just read here, Mm -hmm. um, it says, I mean, her father refuses to give up on her and cares for her at home. That's what it is. It's it's him caring for her at home as she starts to go through her change. Yeah. That's all it is. Um, 
Everyone freaked out. I remember terrible reviews. And again, because people were expecting a zombie. Yes. A, a horror, a zombie horror movie that was, I'm assuming, gory and graphic and that type of thing. There's a certain formula, and this goes against that type. Again, a zombie right. drama. Um, and for me, though, I was going to say this kind of fills in the space between Fear of the Walking Dead and Walking Dead. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? Not necessarily in the timeline or whatever, the same world or anything of that nature. Right. It's just that it's not about the outbreak. Everything well, has already happened in this world. Right. Uh, and, but it hasn't gotten to the complete yeah, that's dystopian not what... future of, yeah. uh, of Walking Dead yet. But it's in between there where bad things have happened, and this is that time where it's been dealt with, but they're still trying to address things such as yeah. personal space, or I mean, personal values and stuff. When does uh, a virus like this become a threat to the rest of the community? Right. How do you not invade people's mm -hmm. rights? You know, the government has kind of got this under control, but not quite. There's rumors circulating. There's all kinds of things. Well, yeah, I kind of got the feeling this is um, like this world it has things more under control. I mean, it's not just not I, raging hordes cross. Right. The, yeah. I don't get the feeling that it's not like Walking Dead where there's groups of people, you know, running around wreaking havoc. And it still still seems like, you know, there's there's martial law. It lets you know in the beginning. And it seems like law is pretty. You know, it's still pretty together. Things are pretty organized. Sure. You know, they lose power occasionally. There's other right. services that are interrupted and so on. I mean, it still sucks because it's it's almost like, um, and are they even, I guess they're calling them zombies, did they? You don't really know what happens when a zombie gets you. It didn't show anyone getting attacked or mauled, well, per se. Yeah. Basically, if you get the infection, you don't die. It's not the, okay, I'm dead and I'm coming back as a zombie. It's the infection. It's well, they the called infection's it... getting to me. I'm pissed off and I'm going to bite people now. Right. They uh, called it necro. They call it necroambulatory. Yes. Was the description for it. So dead walking, basically. But right. They said but... it in that fancy Latin. But you like that you don't have to die, though, before you're... Well, it takes six... To, well, that's true. Um, it doesn't necessarily set on uh, that quick. It takes... Because that's the whole point here. Otherwise, okay, fine, take your loved one home, take care of them, but as soon as they die, please dispatch them. You know, it would be more like Walking Dead or, you know, Z Nation. Right. Give them mercy um, at the end there, or right when they die, you better take care of them. It wasn't like that. It, yeah. It's, it was... You start to change. Your flesh starts to look different. Your eyes start to look different. You're going to have mood swings. You're going to start getting more angry. And then that's when you have to start worrying, because if that person gets angry enough and they grab onto you and bite or scratch you, then congratulations, you've got it too now. You're so next in line. So yeah, it was. I I I loved this movie. I'm just gonna say that right now. I I loved it because um, I it was so different, and it did show what happens in all of these other movies where we gotta have the action and we gotta, you know, we don't know what happens. It's like you see someone get bit, and either you see them later as a zombie or they they kill them right there. You don't ever get to watch somebody change. Right. And the aspect of, you know, the the relationship between, you know, uh, your loved one. And we've seen this on Walking Dead where somebody who somebody cares about gets bit. And, I mean, we've seen that and it's horrible. It's a TV show. It has to move kind of quick. They usually handle it rather quickly. Hey, we saw it last night. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. Um <laughs> But, you know, it's always very, this was a whole entire movie about, like, dealing with it. I mean, Maggie's walking around. She's, like, it, it does make you think. I'm sorry. I'm hearing my voice coming back at me and my, what's happening? What's happening with my computer? Is it me? That was nuts. Okay, sorry. Um, but, yeah, it actually made me think, like, that is just really sad. Like, what if that was you? What if that was me? What do you do? At what point do you say, you know what, I, I love you and I don't want to let you go? You're still you, but tomorrow you might be nuts. Um, it was uh, it was dealing with all of those kind of questions. Well, now I was going to say this is where it's kind of the bummer part for me because it kind of drags it into the real world.